Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending this this session. Um, so the Eurographics Association is uh, putting as a priority uh, to conduct an active approach to promote diversity and inclusion in our computer science disciplines around imaging. It is important to the Eurographics Association that every person attending the conferences and performing research in graphics at large feels fully at ease and included. Respect and tolerance of diversity is a top priority. For this reason, the association has led diversity sessions at the main conferences. The first session occurred last year in Genova in Italy, and we had the pleasure to have the participation of a very renowned pa panelists. This year, this year, it is our pleasure to welcome three panelists, Amela Sadejic, Diana Arellano, and Tony Bailis, and they will present us their analysis of what the conduction of targeted actions toward diversity and inclusion uh, brought to the community uh, in, in, for instance, IEEE VR and ACMC graph. Their presentation will then be followed by a discussion session. And please post your views, questions during the talk so that uh, the panelists could address them. I would like to thank the organizers for their support to put up this session. Uh, it's been a, a pleasure to, to set up this session with them. I would also like to thank my colleagues, Tim Verich and uh, Michela Spagnolo, who helped me to set up this session. And finally, and I sincerely would like to thank the speakers who have accepted um, to give this talk a distance and uh, for some of them in a different time zone. So thank you everyone for attending this session and we will start now with Amela Sadejic. Thank you, Celine. Let me share my uh, screen. All right. So hello, everyone. Um, I'm uh, coming to you from uh, uh, sunny California uh, early this morning, but I'm uh, super happy to be here and uh, uh, bring my contribution to this uh, very important uh, um, uh, topic. Um, as I said, uh, um, I'm a, um, a researcher, a computer scientist uh, with uh, 33 years uh, of uh, uh, experience in um, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality. I started with computer graphics and uh, there is uh, an interesting connection between um, uh, my engagement in uh, um, conferences. Uh, my first conference uh, that I went to uh, was computer graphics conference, Eurographics conference uh, in uh, 89 in Hamburg, uh, Germany. Um, I, I'm currently associated with uh, uh, Naval Postgraduate School. I'm here 16 years uh, and uh, um, do as, uh, as any professors would do, uh, teach and do research. Um, my research expertise is in virtual reality, augmented reality. Um, I started with uh, uh, on algorithmic side and uh, now uh, uh, moved more to human factors, ev evaluation of human performance. Uh, I'm also associate editor for the journal of, um, online jur uh, journal of frontiers in virtual reality, VR industry uh, section. Um, and point of disclosure, uh, my connection to IEEE VR as, I, as uh, my talk is going to be about that conference today is that uh, I have been reviewer for a number of years. Um, and uh, I was member of multiple uh, program committees and exhibit chair uh, several years. Uh, and this year I served as a award committee chair. So um, quite a few roles. Um, I don't necessarily claim to have um, a complete full understanding of inner workings of the conference, but I'm familiar with, uh, with its work uh, goals, um, results, and also uh, some elements of, uh, of its organization. 
So um, this is a, a just brief a visual illustration uh, of the work that I've done in the past, uh, starting from uh, 87 as a young researcher in computer graphics, working on uh, FIGS uh, implementation um, to, to this day when we uh, have uh, a plethora of devices uh, that we use, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality. Um, and as I said, I'm at Naval Postgraduate School, so majority of our research is done in applied domain, some basic research, but applied domain to support uh, Navy. So um, today I wanted to, to talk about uh, IEEE VR conference and uh, uh, have a peek uh, on one topic of diversity um, and uh, um, review of uh, many aspects uh, that conference inevitably will bring. Uh, so a few notes on the conference. It started in 95 as uh, Research Frontiers in Virtual Realities uh, held in San Jose, uh, California. And um, it is largest, and I'll go here on a limb to say it's most prominent international academic conference in domain of uh, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality. This year, um, in March, we plan to have it in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and of course, uh, for the same reason that uh, you have uh, a virtual Eurographics, the decision had been made um, to move it to a virtual uh, domain. And so every single session uh, was st still held, uh, which was really just amazing feat um, to do. Um, and the number of tools were used. So um, in my view, I, I think it was uh, you know, fantastic success uh, with uh, uh, 1,922 uh, um, attendees. It was most attended uh, conference. So the three topics that I would like to review are related to representation of women in uh, IEEE VR as in different roles. And so uh, one role is participants in user studies and researchers and authors of published works at the, at the conference. Um, conference leadership, uh, members, um, women uh, that, that appear as a members of major conference committees, and also um, awardees. Uh, conference, uh, actually IEEE VR, um, uh, provides uh, awards for technical achievement and career. And I just wanted to review with you um, this, uh, the data um, in uh, related to that domain. So uh, when we talk about participation of um, um, women in um, uh, studies as uh, uh, users, subjects, and also authors, uh, uh, the credit to sift all that information, uh, write it, and uh, uh, present it um, at the conference with uh, my colleagues uh, who published that work. Uh, so that's a paper I provide information here. Um, work done by but to be have Peck, uh, Laura Sokol and Sarah Hancock. Um, so they uh, published a paper and it was uh, um, a part of uh, IEEE VR transaction of visualization and computer graphics. So um, their topic as the title says it's a representation of female participants in user studies as well as uh, female authors in uh, vr research and the reason why, why do we care about those topics um, uh, are twofold uh, one is uh, if we don't have a good representation of uh, uh, participants in user studies participation of uh, um, population that uh, uh, topic or technology is meant for uh, there are there are chances for potential negative implications um, if we conduct it with non-representative samples. Uh, and I'll elaborate a little bit uh, on that uh, later on. Um, and for participation of female authors, um, we really need to bring diversity of perspectives and experiences because uh, diversity and inclusion are key ingredients for better decision-making, uh, team performance and productivity, and they are critical to, uh, to innovation. So what they did in that paper, they analyzed uh, data from uh, last five years uh, collected in proceedings of uh, uh, IEEE VR uh, conference, so 2015 to 2019. And so their findings suggest that uh, uh, there is a evidence of significant underrepresentation of women as both participants and authors. Um, you see um, visual illustration uh, of information they collected on authorship. So female authors appear 
uh, in 228 instances uh, and mail orders, uh, there are 1,197. So quite uh, quite a big difference. Uh, I need to mention here that um, uh, this is certainly not uh, not contribution of IEEE VR. IEEE VR is just one conference, any conference, including that one or Eurographics for that matter. It's just one slice in in somebody's life, and so um, we are now seeing results of uh, um, of pr uh, previous. Uh, um, um, the path that uh, women have to uh, go go through uh, and engaging in this type of uh, research. Um, an additional finding uh, is that um, um, under representation of uh, women, uh, female uh, subjects in user studies, and uh, they also found that uh, um, when there is no uh, women uh, authors, uh, so zero uh, papers with zero uh, female authors. Uh, there's different significant significant difference in participation of women uh, as a subject. So when there is um, uh, at least one or more women authors uh, on the paper, um, those uh, studies tend to have more participation uh, in of women in uh, uh, subject groups. Um, they reviewed the 320 manuscripts that uh, were selected. Uh, uh, according to some uh, uh, criteria. And I direct you to, to that paper to look for more information. Uh, they also did meta-analysis. They conducted uh, um, uh, meta-regression to assess if uh, degree of inclusion of female participants is associated with the uh, uh, study's findings. Um, and as a topic, they um, they took uh, simulator sickness. Um, and as you know, simulator sickness can be um, a really significant factor in a number of domains. Um, uh, I especially do work in uh, on in training domain, and uh, training doesn't happen over fifteen uh, minutes. Uh, training sessions last sometimes for hours. Um, maintenance session, for example, uh, can last for four hours. And so, uh, if simulator sickness um, uh, is a it is prominent uh, element, um, it can be detrimental for that type of uh, uh, work um, and the type of uh, training uh, sessions. So they uh, analyzed uh, 22 independent studies uh, that selected from the manuscripts sub submitted to the conference um, and found that uh, underrepresentation of female participants in VR studies uh, may result in uh, bias findings. So that's the um, that's the uh, something that we would definitely like to avoid. So choosing uh, good representation of the population that uh, the particular technology or application is aimed to um, is uh, absolutely crucial. Um, so. As I mentioned, potential consequences is, uh, especially in, in the domain of uh, virtual reality, if uh, we design hardware and software without consideration for women as the users, uh, the final product uh, may not be really optimal, optimized for their um, use. Um, and as a result, uh, that may discourage women from adopting and using that technology to their benefit. Um, the domains that uh, rely heavily on uh, use of uh, virtual reality um, so far and, and in the future, uh, definitely there's that uh, great potential is training, learning, therapy, for example. And um, we could have a situation when women uh, may miss uh, on those opportunities. Uh, their reduced interest um, can also be in, in study uh, of virtual reality and uh, pursuing careers in um, uh, VR research and development. So the guidance that uh, study uh, provided, the, the authors provided is that uh, as researchers, there's, it's our responsibility to commit to using samples a representative of technology and user uh, population. Um, the suggestion is uh, that uh, studies or manuscripts, when they're uh, presented, should include uh, demographic information. And uh, as a community, uh, we should follow the, those pra good practices, but we should also hold, uh, uh, when, when reviewing those manuscripts, we should uh, hold our colleagues accountable, especially when they state um, uh, generalized claims 
and in cases when they may not have uh, good representation, uh, their sample representation of uh, end user population. The second uh, uh, aspect of uh, uh, conference I wanted to, uh, to analyze is uh, a conference leadership. Uh, and so there's a source I used, uh, websites of uh, past IEEE-R conferences and analyzed uh, 10 last years. Um, I didn't uh, analyze the, uh, all the roles that uh, uh, anyone uh, could have, volunteers uh, have, um, but I focused on um, uh, three uh, kind of most important uh, prominent roles that uh, individuals can have as the general chairs, program chairs, and steering committee. So those are committees and groups that uh, make uh, the most crucial decision and uh, um, pay the uh, big picture about the conference and uh, uh, guide uh, everyone else. Um, and I focused on, uh, on uh, uh, gender uh, differences. Um, um, I was not able to account for non-binary gender identity. So uh, that may be a missing point. Uh, the only thing I could go for is male and, and female. Um, and as I said, there are a number of other roles uh, that are uh, part of this um, uh, conference that people can participate in. So as the general chair um, role, um, here's, a, um, here's the data that I provided and I collected about uh, the last 10 years. So you can see that uh, um, participation of women is uh, rather low. Um, it hovers between um, uh, zero and one. And uh, this year, interestingly enough, uh, there was no single uh, woman as a, a general chair and uh, uh, there were uh, four female um, uh, male uh, colleagues. Um, in the past, there were the past ten years. There were four years without any female uh, general chair um, that year. In the roles of uh, program chairs, um, there were um, ten in ten years, uh, eleven female uh, colleagues uh, served as uh, program chairs, um, and uh, compared to forty-one um, male colleagues, uh, you see the numbers. Um, in recent years are growing. That's the point when um, 3D UI um, symposium merged with uh, uh, IEEE VR. And so um, the domain and um, uh, portfolio uh, of the conference grew and there was need to engage more people as uh, program chairs. Um, nevertheless, the number, the growth, uh, um, in a number of people working as a program chairs um, did not follow the growth of uh, female participation as uh, program chairs. And uh, the steering committee uh, was um, um, one uh, interesting case when um, female participation uh, grew over the time. So from, from one in 2011 to four um, this year and last year. Um, so, uh, in total, uh, over 10 years, uh, female uh, colleagues um, participated in number of 19 and uh, male 65. And so when we put everything together, you know, here's, uh, here's information about uh, male and uh, uh, female participation. 36 um, female colleagues participated as uh, uh, general chairs, program chairs, and members of steering committee compared to uh, male colleagues, um, uh, 138. Um, so the... Um, the data that I was um, um, not uh, able to, um, to analyze, but maybe we should, um, is to, to acquire, and the goal is to acquire a comprehensive picture. So um, we should analyze data uh, from the very early uh, beginning um, to meaning uh, 1993, um, including um, this year as well. Um, the remaining goals, uh, analysis of remaining go uh, roles would be uh, of interest. Um, I do know that uh, quite a few female colleagues participate as reviewers as, and uh, um, other program uh, committees. 
um, it would be interesting to review frequency of roles uh, across the time. Uh, I noticed that a uh, number of um, uh, people appear in different roles and they grow uh, over the over the years. Um, and it would be of, of interest uh, to look at other diversity ca categories beyond the gender. Um, one of the special interests, I would think, is um, origin, um, the country of, of participation. This is international conference and um, uh, to remain true to, uh, to those goals, um, it would be good to, to have a full understanding on participation of colleagues from other countries. <laughs> Apologize. Um, and uh, the last element that I uh, wanted to review was um, um, uh, awards. Um, IEEE Visualization and Graphics Technical Committee uh, provides uh, two awards in a virtual and augmented reality technical um, uh, section and so um, the data that were available to me uh, were from 2005 when those awards were established um, to to this day to to, to um, 2020. Um, the data for uh, 2011 went missing um, from that um, uh, data set. As I said, uh, there are two uh, two awards: a technical achievement award and career award. And for uh, Technical Achievement Award, there were three uh, instances when uh, female colleagues received them, 2006, 7, and 10. Um, and only one career award for a female colleague this year, uh, Victoria Iterante, um, a colleague of ours, um, received it um, this year. Um, and in the past, there were uh, 14 uh, male colleagues um, in Technical Achievement Award and 14 colleagues received a career award. So uh, what are the recent uh, developments? Um, we do see things changing. Um, I'm sure not only this com conference, but other conferences as well, as my colleagues will attest. Um, in 2019, uh, the conference introduced accessibility chair, and this year um, the conference had a diversity, accessibility, and inclusion chair. Um, I'm sure um, that their their work uh, was not uh, possible to to expand uh, this year, but we hope that in the future they will have uh, um, more activities, uh, not only for the conference but in preparation for the conference. Um, and so um, I would certainly love to see this um, uh, committee, this um, uh, group uh, growing over the time. Um, I do know that pool of reviewers and program committees are getting more diverse by origin, uh, country, um, and conference uh, more recently started to be organized uh, outside of US. So for example, 2015 was in France, 18 Germany, 19 Japan, and next year, uh, the conference is going to be in Portugal. Um, interesting uh, information is that uh, for the time being, the conference is planning to be um, uh, have dual nature, uh, one physically organized in Portugal, but also virtual version of the conference is uh, here to stay. I think that the community spoke, um, everyone loved um, uh, the elements of a virtual conference. And uh, um, so for next year, uh, the both um, segments uh, will be uh, preserved. And we hope we'll be able to, to go to Portugal and uh, physically and join our colleagues. So I wanted to give a few words about uh, way forward. Um, and again, stress that um, a AAA VR conference is only one event uh, and activity in the life of any VR researcher. Um, so many things happen before and things happen um, while um, we, we are uh, conducting our professional lives and going to other conferences and work um, you know, wherever we, we work. So it's just one, one slice uh, uh, of uh, um, everyone's uh, VR researchers' life. However, it is important uh, slice of that. It is a very prominent conference and uh, people's careers advance uh, thanks to publications that they, they present at the conference and at the end, um, 
is uh, the ultimate uh, uh, reward. Uh, um, those are awards that they receive. Um, so um, interest, I, I, I would suggest that introspection is really needed on part of any organization, whether it's conference or not. Um, and checking your diversity and inclusion uh, bill of health. So um, it would be great to uh, collect and analyze our own data, um, derive conclusions, and um, uh, if, if those conclusions are not uh, satisfactory, uh, design more equitable approaches, including the mechanism for, for the follow-up. Um, and I believe that's where, where we fail um, to, to a good extent. Um, it is nominally, it is um, uh, fairly easy to uh, agree on, on uh, introducing new things, but following them through uh, and checking how well we are doing uh, often uh, is missing. Being proactive, um, I, I take that as uh, uh, guidance to my, um, myself as well. In the past, um, I personally never nominated anyone for, for awards, and I know um, scores of male and female colleagues uh, who are well-deserving of awards, for example. Um, and so nothing stopped me from presenting uh, that type of information, uh, forwarding and uh, uh, being part of, uh, of that uh, proactive um, action. And also uh, be the change, um, waiting for others to bring about uh, change uh, in a way uh, how we operate uh, is uh, not an option. It, would it should never be the option. So this is uh, uh, my talk. I hope uh, I broke it, brought you some elements to, to think about. Um, and I would love to hear uh, what my colleagues brings. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amela. It was a great talk, very inspiring. Um, I think Diana Aureliano will uh, give a presentation now, then Tony, and we will go for the question during the question and answer session. Thank you very much. Okay, so I guess it's my turn. Uh, I will share my screen with all of you now. So, let me know if you share. Okay, good. Good, so uh, first of all, thank you to Celine and to Eurographics for allowing us to be here today. Uh, it's been, it's really for us a pleasure. And I think I speak in the name of Tony and me as ACMC Graph representatives today, because uh, this is actually what it is all about, about collaboration and working together in this important topic. So I think we are very glad to meet Amela today so we can join forces <laughs> and move this forward. So, uh, today I wanted to talk about the evolution of women's presence at SIGGRAPH conferences. And basically, I want to tell you the story of how we started having this place and this space for women conversations uh, at SIGGRAPH. Um, so, uh, for those of you who might not know what ACM Seagraph is, uh, this is the um, it's a special interest group from the in computer graphics and interactive techniques from the ACM, and it started in 1974 as a small group of specialists in um, in what it was at a time a very unknown discipline, and since then, since then it has evolved to become an international community of uh, researchers, scientists, developers, filmmakers, scientists, and business professionals. Everybody with a common interest uh, of computer graphics and interactive techniques. Um, behind ACMC Graph, uh, we have a lot of volunteers. So I am a volunteer. Tony, who will be talking later, is also volunteering uh, for a number of years. In my case, I started 13 years ago. Um, at uh, volunteering as student volunteer and then I grew 
into the organization. And here you can see uh, a lot of, uh, or some of the committees and who are working. So we have the diversity and inclusion, which was uh, recently formed so a few years ago, international resources, uh, digital arts communities, uh, chapters, specialized conferences. Um, so uh, currently I am the external relations chair uh, in addition to be part of the diversity and inclusion committee. This is my volunteering life and uh, we are very proud of having this partnership with Eurographics for many, many years. And this is a great collaboration that we are basically looking forward to continue and to grow in the future. Um, Probably the most uh, known or the most visible face of ACM SIGGRAPH for many of you is the SIGGRAPH uh, and SIGGRAPH Asia conferences. Um, SIGGRAPH is basically uh, a zerographics. It is uh, the place to go and to learn about the latest innovations in CG, in production, in VFX, animation, interactive techniques. And there you go to learn, to be inspired, and to share with other people with common interests as you. Um, but um, how it uh, really started with uh, women in CG. So uh, this started in SIGGRAPH 2014, and this was a part of an event organized by the uh, International Resources Committee. So this committee is basically in charge of uh, bringing the international community and providing a home at the conference and also a home all year long uh, within the international, within the SIGGRAPH community. So um, the International Resources, or IRC, uh, organizes every year a series of events, and we focus on the different continents. So in that, uh, at that year, uh, we decided to, to make it as part of the CG in Europe, a session uh, on women in computer graphics. So Dolly Omisori, who was a representative for this group and me as well, because I'm based in Germany, uh, we thought, okay, uh, people are starting to talk more about women in computer graphics. So let's bring it as a topic. And um, so we had our first panel there and uh, at the time we call it girl power so and this was kind of our catchy way to attract people to this and we had really cool speakers like Irina who was at the time uh, the head of animation in, uh, um, in the University Veritas in Costa Rica and we also had uh, women from the VFX um, field and also from education field. So and here you see some of the questions that we came up with uh, at that time. And uh, we, with the first one, we tried to be a bit polemic because we just wanted to ask the people. So women in computer graphics, what's the big fuss about it? And it was a way to start or to spark the discussion and to say, this is important, let's raise awareness. Um, at that time, we had um, the chair of the International Resources Committee was a very um, was very supportive of this topic. And in order to raise awareness for the attendees to SIGGRAPH, he organized uh, a cake pour pop party, where uh, we would basically meet and get together the day before the. The, the event. So just to say, hey, this is uh, this is new. This is the first time that this is happening at SIGGRAPH. Um, just let's meet and let's discuss tomorrow or the day after uh, about women in CG. So this, uh, I don't know if you see my pointer, probably not, but uh, these are the people who were at the, mo at the time part of international resources who are nowadays also part of diversity and inclusion. Um, so uh, the year after we decided to make the panel, uh, the Women in CG, an event of its own. The reason was that we got um, a good acceptance. The people who attended Girl Power in 2014 were very uh, positive in their feedback. And we, as International Resources Committee, decided, okay, this needs to have its own space. And uh, at that time, we call it perspectives. 
uh, because we wanted to hear the opinions from women in different areas of uh, computer graphics, so industry and academia. Um, Along the years, and while I was doing this presentation, I realized that we have some, in a way on, a, on another, documented the results and the conversations that we had in all these panels. So uh, if you want to read the transcription of this session, you can go to the ACMC Graph blog, and here you can see the URL, or uh, just look Women in CG, Seagraph 2015, and you will, be, you will find this, this link there. Um, so then it came 2016 and uh, we thought, okay, so we have um, greater acceptance once again, more audience. So let's uh, make it uh, once again. And at that time, uh, the topic 50-50 was very, very in vogue. So um, everybody was trying to, to pursue this goal and to, to make it a, a very important topic. So we decided to focus on 50-50. So what to do to achieve 50-50 in women in computer graphics or in the presence of women. So for that session, uh, we decided to showcase um, different um, women, not just in the terms in terms of background, but also in terms of age. So we had uh, one young woman, Jessica Somerville, who later on started actually moderating this panel. And um, she was starting her career at the time. Then we had two other women who were uh, longtime Seagraph volunteers young women with uh, families, small kids uh, who were established in their careers. And then we had one person from Women in Animation, this uh, important organization with a lot of experience in the animation industry. So there we basically, we wanted to, to hear uh, what were their perspe perspectives from their career and, and also personal lives. Um, this session was recorded, so once again, if you want to watch it, you can go to YouTube under this link um, or just Google it, Women in CG 5050, Secret 2016, and you will have the recording of the whole session. Um, so Seacraft Asia 2016 was the first time that actually women in CG um, went to Asia. <laughs> so uh, it was very nice because the Seacraft Asia organization realized the importance of having such an event in their conference. And they basically provided us with the space to hold a similar session as in the North American conferences. Um, the difference uh, in Asia was that we could also add another session called Girls in STEM. Uh, and the idea came from our colleague from the Diversity and Inclusion Committee, uh, Arukia Peixoto, who is professor in computer graphics, uh, in mathematics, and she is really striving to, to bring women, um, to, to, to motivate women into technical uh, paths. So. She said, okay, fine, you, we will have women in CG as usual, same format, but uh, with girls in STEM, the goal would be to um, approach and to discuss the uneven representation of female students in, uh, in STEM. No? So in this panel, it was interesting because uh, topics like unconscious bias or um, how to motivate women to pursue more technical careers were the highlights. Um, in the Women in CG Asia, so all, all, all our panelists had an uh, Asian background, even though, for example, one of them was working in the US. And it was very interesting to see um, how, despite the different cultures and the uh, countries where they were working or they were coming from, the problems and the issues uh, everyone faced were very similar. Uh, so, for instance, one of them uh, who was working in Japan in a video game industry, she talked about the lack of representation or misrepresentation of female characters in video games, for instance. So this was very, very enlightening. Um, so the story goes on. Uh, we are now in 2017 
and we again had uh, women in CG. And uh, as you can see, the person or colleague, Jessica, who was the, la the year or the previous year as a panelist, now she was there moderating. And as you can see, uh, we had full house. This was really, um, the, so, so the previous year we had a lot of attendees and this year having the same presence, so over a hundred people attending this panel was uh, for us a signal that, um, or a sign that these conversations are important and we, we, we do need to have them. That year was um, the movie Hidden Figures was out and SIGGRAPH uh, got this partnership or this cooperation with the Academy um, of Motion Picture Art and Science. And they actually brought a panel on hidden figures and the history, the crew, and, and basically how they made the movie. And this was very interesting and very important because implicitly without talking directly about diversity or women presence, they brought the topic on the table and on a on a big scale. So um, here you could see how things started changing. Um, at that time also, some long chunks of women in research started. And so think that, that the, um, the environment started changing a bit. Um, at SIGGRAPH Asia 2017, we got uh, even more support to carry on with women in CG and girls in STEM. And um, here we even got a get together with food and some uh, takeaways, which was very nice. So um, this SIGGRAPH Asia, if you remember, uh, was in Bangkok, in Thailand. And there it was very interesting to hear uh, the experience from our panelists. So for instance, two of the professors who were in, in the panel uh, girls in STEM, they, despite being of different ages, um, yeah, different age, they faced the same problem. And that problem was uh, the concern of their families for them, uh, how they would pursue a career and having a family at the same time. So, and the concern came because um, if you work long hours and you have a very stressful job, it might happen that you don't um, carry on with your home responsibilities. So this was, um, they, they explained this, they explained how they overcame this situation or how they dealt with that. So it was interesting to see um, other, other experiences. The, the women in CG at that time focused on the representation in front and behind the screen. Uh, because we wanted to explore how is uh, how women are basically behind the screen, um, how many producers, how many directors. VR was at that time um, re-blooming, and uh, this was uh, also an opportunity for many women to pursue more uh, director um, opportunities. And our uh, famous get-together was uh, sponsored by them. Um, Society of Animation Studies and also for the Seoul Forum. So we we, we left this SIGGRAPH with very, very high spirits and really optimistic and thinking, yes, we are making a change. This is going good. Let's let's move on. And the, the, the energy here was, was amazing. Uh, the year after was Vancouver. And again, uh, we had uh, our Women in CG panel, again, full house. And because the, the conference theme was generations, we decided to use it as well for our, for our event. So here we even had the fortune to have Marie-Paul Cani, uh, who is a longtime Eurographics representative. She was there uh, talking about her, her professional career and this was very, very inspiring together with two other women who came from uh, the VFX industry. It was, um, I think it gave another perspective. So how women who are pioneers, who have a very established career made it and it served really as a role model for many, many in the audience. Um, that year, it was 
more uh, clear, or it was clearer, that um, Seagraph was also becoming, or, or the presence of women at Seagraph was growing. So from creative VC, uh, talking about gender imbalance in the industry and how to move um, um, so numbers uh, in terms of representation to um, the women in animation uh, doing a summit where they talk about, for example, male allies, so allies. So it was one of the first times where the men could talk about uh, how they can support women to, to, to achieve this um, equity. And um, at that year, the Spark FX um, had their diversity summit which was moderated by a person from DNEC. And you could see that things were, were moving in, in the direction of uh, uh, gender balance uh, and diversity and inclusion in general. Um, same thing, uh, this was documented. Uh, and if you want to read more about the summit in 2018, you can go to our SIGGRAPH blog and uh, you can have this link if you can copy it very quickly, or you can just Google and, and look for diversity in the animation and VFX community. Um, so, or just go to our ACM Seagraph blog and you will read a lot of interesting content. Um, Seagraph in Japan, um, the Seagraph Asia 2018, provided us a good opportunity to sort of um, let the women in CG in the hands of other people. So it was no longer international resources fully behind it. We partnered that year with Yang Fang, who was the founder of a um, um, school uh, company who organizes boot camps for young people to learn uh, to code. And she basically ran the, the, the Women in CG that year. And it was um, the, the, the important of this session is that um, the feedback and the acceptance and the level of participation, even though it was Japan where uh, the cultural differences are more not noticeable, was very high. So the participation was high, the topics were uh, um, were interesting and they had, um, they had a very good discussion. I think that year uh, it was just one RSC representative there, but from the feedback we got, it was a very, very well attended session. Um, and then uh, we came to last year, uh, that was SIGGRAPH 19, and there we had um, a very nice panel. And the, the thing with 2019, and that's the year where we met, when we met Celine, for example, <laughs> it was a good year. Um, we, we were really thinking, um, you know, with so many events happening at Seagraph, so many luncheons, so many meetings, um, does it make sense for us to continue having this conversation? Uh, where are we? What have we achieved? And all that is what you would call uh, are topics that you would do in a retrospective. So a bit uh, what Amela mentioned about uh, reflecting on what you're doing and how you want to move forward. That was sort of uh, what we did in this Women in CG. We wanted to evaluate and to ask um, what, what has changed, where are we now, and what is still, what is left to be done. So we had a, a wonderful panel uh, with Sydney. So from left to right, we have Sydney Clifton, we had Xiang Chin, we have um, um, I, Katie Bowman, who was uh, very well known last year because of the image of uh, the black hole. And uh, we don't have here um, Caitlin Yam, but it was uh, very interesting because it was a mixture of experiences um, or different types of experience, backgrounds. And um, the message, the final message from this session was, yes, the conversations are important. Yes, you need to keep on doing it. And uh, you don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be afraid to push. You don't need to be afraid to work towards what you want. And do not be afraid of ask for help or ask for support or ask what you need to, to be where you want to be. So Arukia is here on the 
left side. So we were both behind the sessions for the past six years, and it was nice to see how how things evolved and where we were at that time. So. Um, other events that happened at SIGGRAPH 2019 uh, were actually organized by the Diversity and Inclusion Committee, where Tony is uh, our amazing chair. And uh, it was kind of, we started joining forces, so international resources and diversity and inclusion, we kind of had similar um, common goals. And um, for instance, one session that was organized within the Diversity and Inclusion Committee was uh, some was one called Her Stories. And here, 12 pioneers talked about how they started in their careers, how they made changes happen, and how they were still doing it uh, nowadays. And uh, as you can see, other images are from other meetings and get-togethers organized by other companies or organizations. So here are uh, other things that happen. So in the, with different names, women in technology, women in animation, women in VFX, but the goal was the same. So to find a space and to find um, a place for women and or for people to talk about how to achieve uh, equal representation in all the fields, in computer graphics and interactive techniques. So, Seagraph uh, Asia in Brisbane was uh, really the, the, the merging forces of uh, international resources and diversity and inclusion. So there, um, with uh, the leadership of Tony, we had really, really amazing sessions where um, we talked about, or more in general, about diversity and inclusion in the workplace and or from the cultural perspectives and how basically to make the workplace a more inclusive and equal place or with more equity there. So uh, because Tony will talk about this more, uh, I will finish my presentation here. And I hope this uh, the, the history of women in CG at Seagraph is interesting. Uh, for us has been a journey, definitely. And uh, we don't know how we will move it on this year, but definitely we, we, these are conversations that are important and need to happen. And once again, thank you very much. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. So um, my name is Tony Bayless, is uh, Diana in the, uh, uh, Cecilia basically um, uh, uh, commented on. I am uh, the diversity and inclusion chair uh, for ACM Graph. I'm also the um, director of Office of Strategic Diversity and Inclusion Programs at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory uh, in Livermore, California. Uh, I uh, have basically been involved with computing and um, uh, CGRAPH for nearly about 30 years. So um, it's uh, my first uh, conference at SIGGRAPH was virtual, actually, uh, where I worked at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications. And we uh, did a uh, application, uh, visualization application over the, the Internet, uh, quite frankly. So and they had an audience. So that was uh, uh, definitely um, uh, a wonderful experience. And then after that experience, I got involved uh, with SIGGRAPH and organization. Uh, some more. Uh, um, so um, Diana is going to help me out and share uh, my uh, slide uh, uh, set uh, that I built here um, for the uh, uh, give an overview of the conference. So Diana, if you would be so kind. So uh, ACMC Graph, uh, roughly about six years ago, started to uh, revisit and look at what they wanted to do for um, the organization and uh, um, uh, display uh, an effort toward really um, fundamentally looking at strategic planning. And with that strategic planning, they uh, uh, talked about uh, really um, 
the focus of the community at large and how they can actually uh, be better at um, really being a integral value proposition for uh, the community as well as servicing that community over time. All right. Uh, next slide for me, Diana. Thank you. Um, so as part of that journey, they really looked at uh, their mission, uh, the vision, uh, and the goals that they uh, really wanted to actually embark on, but also the values uh, system uh, for the organization as a whole. So with that, they um, revised uh, just about everything that they uh, really looked at. And um, as a result, as you can see here, they focused in on uh, the mission of the uh, organization to really nurture, champion, and connect researchers and practitioners in computer graphics and their interactive techniques. But it was the vision that they really, uh, really, really focused in on. And that vision centered in on um, allowing everyone to um, to basically tell their own story. And um, what we really wanted to do there is to really build a community essentially around the aspect of inclusion and making sure that we were hearing and respecting everyone's voice and that we allowed everyone their sense of uniqueness as part of this. Um, so what I would say is that, you know, um, we've been involved on this journey uh, of diversity and inclusion for uh, quite some time. And we um, really are just getting our hands wrapped around it in a more uh, coordinated way. Um, next slide, uh, Diana. So as an outcome of the efforts, um, our uh, the our efforts, uh, the computer graphics uh, leadership uh, at ACMC Graph, uh, the executive committee, they really uh, uh, wanted to communicate what they were trying to put a quote here from our president, uh, uh, ACMC grant president, I should say, Jessica Hodges. And, you know, it really uh, embodies uh, what we are trying to do uh, and really provide value and uh, significance to uh, the community at large. Um, and the quote basically goes is computer graphics and interactive techniques is about communicating in innovation and in inspiring ways. Telling stories using computer graphics and interactive techniques, whether it's explaining research findings or entertaining huge audiences or helping people understand the world can change societies and cultures. We want to be the community for the existing and emerging fields that the uh, computer graphics and interactive techniques to, to connect people by telling their stories. So uh, with that, uh, you know, that's the centerpiece of this is really about the community and allowing that community to share what they want to share um, as part of this. And you heard from Diana uh, about there is a richness of that community who has a desire to share about their journey, their experiences, and things of that nature. So uh, we are listening. Um, and uh, as a result of uh, the next slide, Diana, thank you. Um, the, as part of that, the executive committee really wanted to put forth, you know, focus efforts. Um, they wanted to remain relevant and meaning to our meaningful to our existing communities and provide them with ever more professional value in the future. And the example of that is what Diana was talking about. There was this really uh, big sort of uh, interest among, among the women at Seagraph about how do you elevate their stories, quite frankly, and how you basically work toward stories in a way that is informative, educational, that's also uh, may lead to uh, maybe social uh, change, um, and not only within the community, but also maybe in their workplaces as well. Um, I could tell you as part of uh, my um, experiences with the conference over the years, you would hear different 
stories about where uh, people had a uh, interest in it and a passion to uh, really uh, uplift the organization from a community uh, perspective. So that is the meaning you had little small communities and you had larger community, the larger community of the organization. And those smaller communities really wanted to have a voice more uh, in what was going on and to, to pay attention to some things that they were concerned about. So uh, we we did that, um, and Diana and a team uh, really put together a really wonderful set of uh, conferences uh, over the years. So the second aspect of what the, the focus area was was dedicating to uh, reaching out to new communities and welcoming them to the to Seagrack uh, and family. And that was part of Diana's role uh, to a certain degree as part of uh, the external relations committee. But um, the executive committee wanted to put more of a, uh, as I said earlier, a coordinated effort around all of these things that uh, there was an interest and a direction they wanted to move for their vision. So uh, as a result, you see a diversity inclusion committee is born out of that. I was asked to chair that committee. Um, and um, for me, I wanted to really focus in on recognizing that CGRAP was a very global um, community. And I really wanted to try to get perspectives that represented that the global international aspects of it. So I have uh, individuals that have different uh, experiences in life that uh, have different identities that basically uh, have uh, different uh, disciplines and fields that they work in um, that are geographically from all over the world. Uh, and that has been um, uh, a wonderful uh, lesson for me um, in educating me more about the international um, understanding of what's happening out there, uh, being from the U.S., and, and having a very US-centric life, um, I have grown to have a lot more understanding. I mean, I've been in academia and uh, in the government for um, over 30 years. However, um, this experience has really helped me and shaped me even more uh, with a better understanding about the international uh, aspect of diversity and inclusion. So it's been a wonderful learning experience for me. Next slide. So for the committee, we really wanted to take a look at what does it mean to, what does diversity and inclusion mean um, for a organization, especially uh, uh, nonprofit organizations, for-profit organizations, government entities, workspaces. So what we looked at is uh, a lot of definitions centered around diversity and inclusion. And what we really came to uh, and is that diversity is really part of an inclusion process. And um, that process is really uh, to foster the uh, environment that you're in, in which uh, identities and typically what happens, especially in the U.S., centered around race and ethnicity. However, it's more than that. We wanted to have uh, an aspect around different perspectives, around experiences, skills, talents, uh, beliefs, ideologies, similarities and difference that are respected and valued by all. And then inclusion is about the culture and how you basically create a sense of belonging and connection for the actual individuals within that organization that helps to encourage collaboration, um, helps uh, fit with fairness and equity as uh, Diana had talked about, and then leverages diversity throughout the organization as well so that all the individuals feel like they can participate and contribute to their full potential. So that's part of this journey that we as a committee was taking on and then moving that into the framework of the organization as well. Next slide, Diana. So um, we, as part of our journey, wanted to understand uh, what is uh, about uh, inclusive cultures and environments uh, and then also position it in a way that a lot of people may understand as a business case or uh, uh, or why do this and, and why does it actually uh, help? And Amelia had referenced this earlier in her talk. And, and uh, inclusion research, you know, one of the 
uh, ones that we basically uh, read as part of our strategic uh, sort of journey uh, into this space was one by Deloitte, uh, a, uh, uh, Truthful Facts. And, and that, uh, that research really pointed out how organizations uh, with inclusive environments are two times more uh, uh, meeting financial or exceeding financial targets, three times being more uh, high performing, and then also six times being more innovative than agile, and then eight times more likely to achieve better business outcomes. And um, I've even uh, basically moved this into the front of my own. Uh, work at uh, Lawrence Livermore, and and it helps science as a whole. And you bring interdisciplinary teams together. We should really be uh, looking to uh, work toward how do you basically connect all those individuals in a way that helps enhance the science. And we've been doing it for years, but have we been really truly inclusive for all those years in doing that? And if you talk to some folks uh, that have been in that sort of setting um, for their, their lifetime uh, uh, from different perspectives. And you have to respect those perspectives. But at the same time, um, the data and the research so shows mostly that it hasn't been. Um, as clue, how do you do that and how you move forward? So, uh, next slide. So, what we uh, really uh, focused in on was coming up with a vision and a, a, a mission and a purpose to help communicate, you know, why this committee is here and how does it complement what our executive committee was doing with their strategic vision and, and mission and upheld the values uh, of the organization. And um, I'll just go ahead and um, just uh, read certain pieces of this um, and and. You can read the rest, but as part of our vision, we really wanted to be the premier organization that's the model um, for inclusion, equity, access, and diversity for all. Um, and then our mission is really to center around building awareness, education, uh, provide resources both on site and year round. And we also um, hope to really be committed to expanding and broadening the com many communities of CGRAF and to be advocates and champions for those communities as well. Um, so um, we really feel our, in our leadership that we really wanted to move forward with promoting inclusivity, equity, and access to empower all the people within all of our communities at ACMC Grant. Next slide. So, uh, our goals, we came up with five uh, goals, and uh, those goals were centered around um, some of the things that Amelia referenced. Um, we have a lot of work to do, Amelia, <laughs> to catch up with you, unfortunately. And I'm gonna, uh, I have to dedicate a, a, a volunteer to do a lot of things that you uh, have done thus far in looking at uh, the data that is representative of your community. Um, and, and, you know, I applaud you and the conference for doing that work because it's, it's definitely uh, needed because that data helps informs and shapes us in a way that uh, we can make better decisions of uh, our service to the community as a whole. So our goal is basically centered in on collecting and being transparent with the data um, regarding diversity and inclusivity and in the leadership, as Amelia showed, in the committees and the membership and also our conference attendance. Uh, we want to leverage resources and content to help build that awareness and uh, knowledge and educational enrichment for all the members. Uh, we wanted to collaborate uh, with the conferences, um, such as we're doing right now with your graphics. We really wanted to uh, build partnerships on this journey that we're on. And uh, what we found is that we're not the only one. So there's a number of different companies. Uh, that are also interested in doing this in their topic. Some of them uh, partner with us to sponsor um, our events and our summit and our uh, women's luncheon that I'll mention briefly later. Um, so this is something of a topic across the board, and it seems to be an international conversation as well. So um, 
we really wanted to, you know, integrate diversity and inclusion topics and themes and pr procedures uh, around certain aspects of, you know, how we put together our conference committees, how do we put together our panels, things of that nature, and um, have people notice um, and act when they see that we're not being as included. Um, we wanted to adopt and integrate diversity and inclusion in all aspects of our communications, quite frankly, um, market retailing materials, uh, in addition to um, that messaging going uh, out on social media, uh, to, to in our stories that we tell in our imagery in general. Um, and I get, uh, I, I get uh, emails or uh, conversations with folks about this as well. Um, and they basically will uh, shine a light on, um, you know, uh, that that you got a picture up there and I don't see one female in that picture. Why is that? So um, we appreciate that, actually, because um, we do want to be held accountable for what it is we're trying to, to do. And, um, you know, we're we're not exempt from making mistakes, uh, but we're, we're striving and we need your help to do that. Uh, as part of that. So uh, we definitely want that as part of our journey. And then, and, and, and that goes to the last um, goal is that we are committed to getting feedback from our membership attendees and guests uh, as part of our journey as well. Next slide, please. Um, so what uh, actions have we done to date? We've worked on uh, really trying to raise the awareness that uh, we're trying to coordinate all these different activities centered around diversity and inclusion, um, and um, we definitely, we developed our strategy and efforts toward uh, what we wanted to achieve in a um, uh, complementary aspect to what the uh, EC has set as their vision uh, for the organization. Uh, we began our data collection. We initiated a program called CVR Cares that I'll talk about in a few minutes, and then we curated um, DNI uh, summit presentations. Uh, at SeaGraph uh, 2018, 2019, and SeaGraph Asia 2019 as well as uh, Dinah Lutu. And then we have plans for 2020. Um, Amelia, I invite you to be a part of our journey <laughs> as we move forward. Uh, and we would love to have you as a speaker for uh, the conference if you were so inclined uh, to do so. Um, as Diana uh, mentioned that there is a, a, a large effort uh, that's focused in on, on women relation, wanted to uh, highlight some of those things. And, and so one of the things we have as well as a women's research luncheon that uh, happens uh, every year. And we get partnerships and sponsorship uh, for that luncheon uh, each year. And uh, it's basically this year to try to uh, work toward that at Eurographic. So she watched what some of the things we were doing. She attended the luncheon, and I, I think she found it very um, helpful. When people basically get together and can build community networks, it brings a sense of belonging, and it brings a sense of connection. And as a result of that, you look at that in a, in a, in a wonderful way to um, really focus on um, how we can uh, support that as best we can. So, and that's what we're doing currently. So uh, next slide, the other aspect to show uh, some of the things that we've been doing is our conference presentation. So we formulated in 2018, we brought together a summit. Um, I brought some of my college research colleagues in the field um, uh, to give talks uh, around uh, diversity and inclusion from a, a science and research background. And uh, with that, uh, we uh, springboarded off of really showcasing what we as a organization means by diversity and inclusion. And as you can see, it runs the full range of uh, bringing in uh, technical research uh, as well as overlapping sort of essential skills and understanding about diversity and inclusion. You know, um, you know, examples being is AI bias and can AI be ethical uh, as part of that experience? Uh, basically, unconscious bias at work. Uh, and then we uh, started to what um, over 
in the Asia community as well. So uh, I have a colleague and to the conference and then, you know, gave a talk as well in the Asia and the why, what, and how to do it in that area uh, of the world. So uh, all of that was very helpful. On the data collection side, as I said, uh, which is uh, the next slide, um, we basically uh, just started to try to understand and get baseline information um, around, um, you know, things we think would help inform us and educate us uh, about the community. We've also had meetings uh, with uh, 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 women in CG. We had meetings uh, with other communities within the organization as well. But we came up with a set of questions that we're going to use as a baseline to try and understand a lot of the things that are going on. So we want to understand about age, uh, gender identity, disability, race, uh, country uh, of origin, also uh, native lang languages, uh, discipline fields that people are coming from, how long they've been attending uh, a CGRAB conference, and how long have they been a member, uh, perhaps, of a conference, and do they feel that the conference is welcoming in a safe environment and it, is it diverse and inclusive from their perspectives? And if not, why? So we're, we're really starting this journey. Um, we still have more work to do and, and along the lines of what uh, Amelia showcased in the VR um, sort of conference um, with IEEE. So we're, we're planning to do those things. Uh, but it's going to take time. You got to remember also, we're a volunteer organization. <laughs> so it takes a lot of work for uh, a lot of people to uh, get into um, looking at all this uh, data that we have. And, and uh, CGREP as an organization has been around for a long time. So uh, that data will probably take a, a just as long uh, to look at and try to discern information from it. Uh, the next slide uh, centers in on one of the programs to be um, enacted at the conferences and all our events. And it basically uh, helps us to abide by ACM's policy against discrimination and harassment. And that, uh, and that, that program is called CGRAP Cares. And what we did was really uh, pull together a committee to aid reporting on discrimination and harassment policy violations uh, at the conferences and events. Um, Alain Chenet is, is our chair for that particular uh, area um, and that committee. And what he basically had really did was uh, provide the ability for to report incidents either in person or via web-based uh, form. Um, uh, we provide training to on site well and his committee also went through uh, training on psychological safety and how to intake reporting as well because I brought a, uh, a person in to who's uh, done that work uh, work with the core committee at that particular time um, the program all communicates all our policies at all our events uh, around this and then when violations do occur the committee provides aid and support in, in reporting those issues. Uh, so they're, they're really trying to create that safe space uh, for the individual who's possibly experienced sort of this trauma at their, um, uh, at the conference or event that they're at. So um, the slide that I'll point to is uh, uh, that really uh, efforts for a year round um, commitment to our goals is we started a webinar series, which we launched last week, in fact. Um, and during this uh, 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 effort to really push forward some of our goals and our efforts, we basically wanted to say, how can we help enhance um, the storytelling aspect? So what we wanted to do is build a webinar series centered around that called Fostering Inclusion Through Web Storytelling. And uh, the webinar last week, Working From Home, in the actual uh, visual effects industry was a live stream we did um, uh, really with in partnership with the, our Canadian partners as well um, as we move forward with this effort. All right, so with that, um, how can we basically, our next slide, how can we basically um, 
what things are we basically doing? Um, we're as far as our future efforts, we want to continue to raise awareness. We want to continue data collection. We want to build a greater presence uh, uh, within our uh, conferences, workshops as well. Um, the uh, effort that we have, uh, as you can see, is uh, Seagraph Asia 2020. And you can see the theme of that particular conference is driving diversity. So we're starting to help build and shape that awareness uh, even more. All right, and I'll move to um, uh, close here. Um, I would ask of all of you that are uh, within the community of your graphics and we see them graph and VR uh, as well is to join us. Um, the uh, and, and how can you join us? Um, really starts with you and starts with I looking at myself. Uh, basically, you can educate yourself. Um, about the aspects of diversity and inclusion and how you can lean in to engage, how you can listen actively, how you can basically seek diverse perspectives uh, as well um, as you move forward and then uh, remove barriers for others. Be an, a, an ally and an upstander for others. Uh, hold yourself accountable. All right. And lead by example, especially if you're in a leadership role. Um, power is key to this aspect of this journey. And then we can ask that you also uh, volunteer as well. So, um, so Zaleh, do you want me to stop there and not play the video so we can go to Q&A or you want to play the video? Um, this is a tough question because it, the video <laughs> is probably very interesting. The problem yeah. is that we have only 10 minutes now to discuss no worries. things. So no worries. Is it something that could be put online your video it can it's already online so no worries uh, okay so if you maybe point out the video maybe people could watch it uh, later on you bet all right we can go to q a if you like that so thank you very much to the three of you it was very inspiring very inspiring talk um i'm very glad that you accepted to us uh, speak about your experience in this session we could see that woman was the starting point but it goes much beyond that now it's really diversity and inclusion is really addressing to everyone many different aspects and we should really move to forward and uh, and go for more inclusion everywhere um, there were two points that were made online there was um, Alexandra Diel who pointed out that IEEE uh, VIS was also organizing some uh, diversity panels. And there was one question online uh, uh, that was made by Petra Eisenberg. And she said that the, the, I, Petra is, pro uh, uh, sorry, I said she, my, I hope I'm not wrong. Uh, the difference in award numbers is astounding. Do you know how many female awardees we should expect given female community members uh, numbers? So maybe Amela or Diana? I, I'm not sure. I, 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 I heard the uh, question very well, uh, Celine. How many uh, awards could be expected? We should expect, uh, given the female community uh, member numbers, so is is the number of female uh, member uh, growing? Is it stable? Uh, is it expected that this number of awards uh, grow? I I, I would definitely think so. I mean, um, when I um, so I I take part of responsibility as as we all should. Um, I was not paying attention. I, I was really just, you know, years would come by, you know, the, the really high, highly deserving colleagues would receive awards, and, and that's excellent. Uh, nevertheless, uh, when I started analyzing the data, I realized, uh, um, you know, the, the numbers in terms of uh, female awardees is very, very low. Um, and then when I think about, uh, um, you know, female colleagues in, in this domain, I could think of at least at least five that could would be well deserving of 
um, and a career award uh, and another five or ten of, of a technical award. So it, every year, it's not that one person excelled that year suddenly. Um, it's just that person got nominated, right? And sometimes it's really, it, it comes also, it's, I don't think there's a shortage of well-deserving individuals, but we may have um, a shortage of uh, well-deserving uh, you know, nominations. <laughs> and so just nominate. Um, so that, that's my um, my comment on be proactive. Uh, I, I take part in that resp responsibility as well. Um, so I think there are more people, that more people should be uh, awarded. Uh, this year, as a part of uh, um, chair, I was uh, chairing uh, awards committee, um, we decided to introduce more awards. And so there are more papers uh, that uh, received uh, best paper award. Um, we also gave uh, several uh, honorable mention. Uh, it's, it's really hard to to um, to say to, to make a cut, and if there are three well deserving, why not uh, award all of all of them? There's nothing to prevent us from that. Uh, one year, I should say, um, three male colleagues received uh, technical achievement award. So again, it's possible. I guess um, maybe to add to what Amela said, um, and she mentioned something very interesting at the beginning, uh, that you don't pay attention. And I think it's, um, it's not a matter of is a man or a woman, it's just uh, the name that comes to your head is usually the name that you probably saw the most or the person you have more contact the most. So, uh, but once you raise this awareness and uh, a great um, tool for that is to show numbers, like the numbers that Amela showed us or the numbers that we want to gather at ACMC Graph. So this uh, puts in the minds of the people who are responsible for uh, providing awards or recognitions to think, um, okay, let's try to make the exercise and let's not stay with the names that we know, but let's see which other talents, who else is there uh, who, who are as talented as these uh, men that we know. So um, the question is very specific in the sense, how many should we expect? I think uh, it's, um, it's diff difficult to say an exact number, but um, at ACM Seagraph, for instance, we have a very strong female leadership. So our president is a woman and uh, chairs of uh, the past conference and this conference are women. Seagraph Asia is a, is a female chair. So we see that uh, it's, it's happening already and they are aware of bringing more women uh, or other minorities as well. So you see more diversity in the people in the different committees. But um, still, it's uh, we still need to keep raising awareness, showing numbers and uh, making sure that uh, we are really uh, inclusive and this equity is happening. Tony, do you want to add something to this? Uh, well, no, I, I, I would just say that I, I totally agree. And uh, some of the efforts that uh, we also took on is that we, we've we created new award, awards as well um, to recognize uh, innovative uh, educators, uh, outstanding practitioners. We, we've basically made the actual uh, intentional sort of effort toward that aspect of what the, the person is asking the question about. So we're we're looking at that and, and, and trying to encourage because part of the other pieces is equal. We have to actually get people to apply or be a part of that. We can also recognize those individuals that are out there. So how do we get more people involved to uh, be showcased at the particular conferences when we're giving those awards? So that, So that's what I would add to that. So thank you very much. Um, I would like to add something. So your graphics really aims at getting inspiration from all your actions and, and go in your direction, the same direction and provide the same facilities to the your graphics community. Um, and 
we could use the opportunity of this conference and the fact that it is, it is online with so many online tools so that uh, people could post some suggestions of what they would want your graphics to do for them. And uh, there is the Discord uh, with the diversity event uh, room, and you can post there some comments, you can post there some suggestions, and we would really like to hear from you and to know what we could do for you. Okay, so um, would you want to say a last word before we close the session? Everyone? If Thank I you. Start, I agree with you. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Emil. Go ahead. No, no, go, 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 Tony. All I was just going to say is thank, thank you for uh, inviting us to the talk. Uh, we we look uh, forward to the partnership with uh, both uh, of the conferences uh, going forward, and and we really want to work together to help raise the awareness and also enhance what we're trying to do for the community at large. So thank you very much. Thank you, Celine, for invi inviting to, to participate to this uh, panel. Um, and, and as I said, um, the, the best message is be the change, uh, be the change. There's nothing that will be offered. Um, so, um, you know, coming up with uh, uh, approaches and uh, you know, both of our organizations, all three organizations are really volunteer organizations. It takes a lot of time, uh, but I think it's uh, time well spent. Thank you. Um, so maybe before Tony can answer this question, <laughs> uh, I can say that it's hard. It's hard to be a change um, agent. Uh, and uh, as Tony said, you need to hold yourself accountable and uh, like walk your, uh, how you say, walk your talk. And it's hard. It's hard because one is surrounded by um, people who are just not aware of this and it's difficult to raise awareness. And is but still surrounding ourselves by people with same goals and same um mindsets it's it's really helpful because it gives you courage to actually be more proactive which is uh the message that i take from amanda and from tony so just um keep on trying and even though you think you're diverse enough uh think again look around you and if you think that this topic doesn't apply to you um uh, just look around you and think again <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Um, so uh, we had one last comment that was, how can you ensure that the diversity chair has actual influence on conference organization? I think I, I, would, I would say that all the actions that we are doing now to raise awareness, put some pressure on uh, some chairman, general chair, paper chair, to pay attention and check that they actually not include always the same colleagues, always the same people from the same countries, and ensure that diversity is really part of our work and uh, make space for everyone. Um, so I, I hope you all agree with me because I answered that question in the end. And uh, I would like to uh, invite you all to join for the woman lunch. This is going to be a great event on Thursday. Uh, it's from 12.30 to 1.30 um, occurring with the, at the, at the uh, Sudan uh, time, time zone. So maybe Amela won't join us because it's going to be very, <laughs> very early for her. Uh, but please join us. And I want to add that Tony is right. Um, attending woman lunch session is great. And this is how I could uh, meet the, uh, a great woman, which is Amela Sadajik, that is here today. I was sitting right next to her at the lunch uh, session. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you very much to everyone. And um, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you again. Thank you very thank much. You. Great meeting. Thank everyone. you to the organizers. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for so nice meeting you all. <laughs> all right.